are very fortunate enough here today to have with us David Mao, who is the Deputy Librarian of Congress, and he's also the Acting Law Librarian of Congress. David has been kind enough to join us. We are celebrating a number of events in Minnesota. We've got a Magna Carta Constitution Day celebration tonight at the Minnesota History Center, and David is going to be one of our headliners at the event, along with our Chief Justice Lori Gilday and Governor Mark Dayton. David, one of the things we wanted to ask you was, based on your vast experience, why is uh, Magna Carta a document that is 800 years old, was written on uh, ancient sheepskin, why is that relevant still here for us today? Uh, it was a document that was written uh, 800 years ago in a foreign land by a foreign king in a foreign language. But it's still very relevant to us today because Magna Carta was the underpinning for much of what we know today in the United States for our constitutional development. And uh, we at the Library of Congress, in fact, launched an exhibition late last year to celebrate the 800th anniversary of Magna Carta, but really talked about the Magna Carta and its impact on constitutional theory development and especially constitutional development here in the United States. So we can trace back, we trace back in our exhibition through documents from the Library of Congress, um, manuscripts, legal books, legal texts, court opinions, all centered around the theories that were uh, developed by uh, legal theorists in the 17th century when they were interpreting Magna Carta. So right to trial by jury, for example, right to due process of law, uh, privilege of the writ of habeas corpus. So these are things that can all be traced back to Magna Carta, but they are still very much a heritage for us here in the United States and still very much important for us in the United States. So how has Magna Carta contributed to keeping the law accessible to the average person? Well, one of the great principles that comes out of Magna Carta is the, the, the rule of law. And that's if there are any three words that anybody should remember about Magna Carta, it's rule of law. Um, and really what that stated back in the day, if you think back when King John sealed Magna Carta, was that he, even as king, was not above the law. And so that's relevant for us today in keeping uh, Americans aware um, of that privilege and right that we have here, that there is no um, government, there is no elected official, there is no royal king, if you will, that is above the law, and it's the law that is the basis for our democracy. You and I have both been involved over the course of the last year and a half in, in various Magna Carta activities, uh, both in the United States and, and in the United Kingdom, and it seems in some cases that maybe uh, Magna Carta is even a bigger deal here in the U.S. than it is in the United Kingdom. Uh, yes, indeed. Uh, and I think, again, that traces back to the fact that we can point to specific instances here in our U.S. history that derive from Magna Carta. In fact, Magna Carta is cited in a lot of the early statute books. They were, it was qu quoted and printed right up front in the statute books. Probably a lot of the uh, Thomson Reuters publications still have Magna Carta when the, if, you, if you go back and look at it because it's still included and that language is there. And so I think we here in the United States have a closer history uh, to that. And certainly because we also have a written constitution, the Declaration of Independence can be traced back, the written constitution, the Bill of Rights, all can be traced back um, to the Magna Carta and to the theories that were developed uh, through the interpretations of Magna Carta. And so I think that's why it makes it just much more appreciable to the Americans uh, rather than others else, elsewhere in the world. Even though it's been 800 years, is there any uh, uh, theory that would suggest that Magna Carta is still relevant to us here today? Well, that's an, that's an excellent question because scholars can always de derive new things from studying for, for a long time. The conventional wisdom had been that once King John had agreed to Magna Carta, the text of Magna Carta ha was um, written out by scribes in chancery, which would have essentially been the government if, um, at the time. But recent analysis of the existing 1215 Magna Cartas, handwriting analysis, has discovered that the hand, not in chancery, but in church. So scribes in the church were writing out Magna Carta, which were then, uh, the various copies were then distributed among the um, different cathedrals and counties in, in England. And that raises a the question then, how much power and influence did the church have versus the king? Um, I don't think there's an answer for that, but it's certainly an interesting uh, new nuance that's been discovered currently that will help inform our study of what has happened uh, historically 
over the last 800 years. So, so it seems as if uh, Magna Carta presents us with both a dissemination and a preservation question. At the time when the Magna Carta copies were sealed by the king, uh, presumably they were sent out by courier to all of the, the churches and the counties that would have, would have kept them. But over the years, as we've seen with uh, 1215 Magna Carta, only four copies remain. Um, contrast that with the way information is uh, stored and disseminated today. Well, I, I, I think that's absolutely right. You, back then, the information, you would have had to go to the cathedral, and that's how you would have found out what the law is. In this day and age, somebody sitting at their home computer could just type it in and presumably pull it up, but actually works to the advantage and, and, and of the people, which is you have free and open access to information and to uh, the law. And that's one of the things that we at the Library of Congress, and the Law Library of Congress in particular, strive for and, and keep as a guiding principle is to make sure that whatever we have is available to the people. Sure helps fulfill the promise of due process so people understand what Certainly. the laws are that they're actually subject to. Exactly. What are some of the things that uh, the library's done to celebrate Magna Carta? Well, we had an exhibition last year which was very, very popular. In 10 weeks we were able to have over 112,000 people come through and see the exhibition. We had the privilege of having the uh, Lincoln Cathedral Magna Carta, the one of the four remaining 1215s, on display, along with 75 other items from the library's collection to tell the story of Magna Carta, primarily from the American perspective. We also had a symposium, a symposium on Magna Carta, an all-day symposium. We had a lecture series on Magna Carta. We uh, had an interview with Chief Justice Roberts, for example. We did a lot of programming, and the idea was to get uh, information about the Magna Carta and its import to the American people and history out to uh, the future generations. We used uh, social media quite extensively, for example. But we also worked with Thomson Reuters in producing a book, Magna Carta, uh, Muse and Mentor, was the title of our exhibition, and I believe also the title of the book. And we were very fortunate that you were able to find uh, Justice Randy Holland from Delaware to, to be able to um, corral the authors and, and get such stellar authors and such legal minds out there to write about Magna Carta. And so we were really very, very delighted to work with you on that project.